This encore presentation of Disclosure is brought to you by the Voice of Prophecy. Enjoy! The music tells me it is time to start the show. Welcome to another bullpen episode of Disclosure, which is a special edition of this program just for men. I think just for men is actually the name of a beard dyeing product, isn't it, guys? There's a bunch of guys here in the studio with me. I don't isn't know that about called that just yet. for men. When they you yeah, I think you're right. Dye the yeah. <laughs> anyway, but this is a radio broadcast just for men, an exclusive broadcast for the male half of the species, where we gather a group of regular guys. Well, I don't know about these guys if they're regular or not, but close to it, as close to regular guys as I can find, and we discuss the worlds of religion and life and maleness and a bunch of other stuff. Actually, whatever comes to mind. It's guys only. So what we do in this show, we climb up into our fort, we pull in the ladder behind us, we hang out a no girls allowed sign. And that's right. You heard it correctly. We practice complete and utter discrimination, unabashed, unashamed gender preference in this show. And if that bothers you, if you don't think anybody should ever be excluded from anything at any time, if you grew up in a world where everybody always wins and everybody always gets a blue ribbon, then it might be very helpful for you to think of this show as a safe space for men. This is a place where we can go. It just doesn't have the puppy videos and the coloring books, but it's a safe place for men, apart from the rest of the world, where we can talk openly and honestly and examine the big questions of life. And we can ask ourselves if the Christian religion is still for guys or if it's something that left them in the dust several generations ago. So today in studio, I've got Alex Rodriguez, the director of evangelism at The Voice of Prophecy. I've got Kyle Warren, who works in our creative department and makes us look pretty every day, Carl, and making me look pretty, not I, an easy job. I do my best. You do your best to color. <laughs> do I get to keep my, what color am I? Do, do you have a color palette for my face? No. After Just for Men, then you're... you're if you're I'm using color. Just for Men, <laughs> yeah. A little bit of gray. A little bit of gray. My skin would be something like mango smoothie or papaya smoothie or something like that. I we, heard we have our own proprietary blend. Yeah, <laughs> that matches mine. And we got Ruben Gomez, who's actually the producer of this program. And he's also the voice of Jake Donovan on uh, Discovery Mountain. Isn't that right? That's right. We're not, we won't make you do the voice here today. Oh, thanks. No, I think we will, won't Let's we? Do Let's do it. Uh, Let's hear the voice. All right, fine. <clears throat> Go. <laughs> it's a disaster. Yeah, now we can't let you See, in the bullpen no, anymore. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're out of here. Don't ever do that again. Anymore. All right, so we got... Hey, you asked me to. <laughs> Alex and Kyle and Ruben, and of course yours truly, your not-so-modest host. And uh, I can afford to be not-so-modest because it's the bullpen, and my wife's not here to make me feel more modest or tell me... To calm it down. To rain, rain it in. Yeah, rain it in. Do you get that one? Rain Sometimes, it in. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Because <laughs> I can be immodest once in a while. And Guys, welcome to the show. Our topic today, does the world still need fathers? And I know some people are saying, well, what a stupid topic. Of course, the world still needs fathers. Whoever said that we don't? Well, some people have said that. Uh, and the only way you can say nobody's ever said the world doesn't need fathers is to not pay attention to social developments in the Western world over the last, ooh, 50 years. Yeah. Uh, seems like we've moved out of the era of the ever wise Ward Cleaver in Leave It to Beaver, or what was the other show? Leave It, no, the one with the dad, All My Sons, or the hands clap in the beginning. You guys aren't as old as me. I don't uh, remember that. You're almost as old as me. It was not during my generation. I, I was going to It was too. Okay, but you know, look at the fathers on television shows from the 1950s. And uh, compare it to the fathers in television shows now. We've gone from Ward Cleaver to Homer Simpson, and the messaging is not terribly good, right? No, it's right. not terribly good. Fathers no. are the buffoons. Mm -hmm. Everybody in a show is smarter than the father. Yeah. It happens to be true in my house. Happens to be true. But as a rule, they're portraying fathers as morons. You're not helping things here. No. I <laughs> know. <laughs> All right. I'm the reason that Hollywood went that way. I, I doubt yeah, that. I, right. There's probably something else going on there. Well, of course, on, on the more radical fringes of society, or the more radical fringes of the feminist movement, we've seen people suggest, we, we don't need men at all. They're just not needed. Maybe I've seen people say, maybe we can figure out how to you know, even reproduce without men. We just take the DNA and clone the cells and, um, and uh, transfer DNA from one woman to another. So let me do this today to kick off the show. Let me launch the show with a disturbing story that popped up in my news feed a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys saw it. I think you did because I sent it to you ahead of the show. Uh, a father who is fighting to keep his six-year-old son from having to go through gender reassignment 
surgery. That makes me cross my legs. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I guess he broke up with his wife, and the wife insists that the little boy is actually a girl. Um, and it brings up a whole set of issues with the whole transgender movement. It'd be a different show. Um, the This whole idea that you should surgically alter little kids who experience gender dysphoria as little children. It's a different show. But here's how the story shakes out. I guess the mother takes the little boy to a gender transition therapist in Texas who explains that in reality, little James, six years old, is actually a girl. So mom renames him Luna and starts making him wear dresses. Uh, that's bad enough. But what's interesting about this show, I mean, for the purposes of this show, they went to court and it turns out the father has no say in this. Uh, he's, he's concerned when the boy comes to his house. The boy says, I don't want to wear dresses. I'm a little boy. Hmm. But a judge in Texas has now forbidden him from telling his son that he's a boy and has forbidden him to give him boy's clothes to wear when he comes to visit, even though it's what the boy wants uh, and insists that he's a boy. So that's disturbing. But let me ask this question. Here's the reason I brought it up in a father show. Why do you think the father's opinion in this case, or really in a lot of custody cases, is valued less than mothers are? Have you noticed this trend? Or I haven't noticed that. Yeah. What's your feeling on this? When you guys saw that article, I did forward it to you. What, you did. What, yeah. 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 Okay. Gut reaction. Well, I, I think gut reaction, there, there is there's su- such a motherly instinct uh, mother and children that just come together, fathers at work, uh, and we've had a society that that has has done that for so many years. Right, and so I think maybe some of that has had had some to play in in the fact that when you think about who does the child go with, who who does he need to be with? Well, it, it's it, it's the mother. It, he needs to be with the mother, and sometimes I think the father just kind of gets dropped off. Well, he just he he's not around a lot anyway. Right, so we might as well just listen to the mom, and here you are. Huh. But in this case. Oh, this one it's bugs sad. me. This yeah, story no, just bugs me. It's yeah, like, wait a minute, why the father's not allowed to tell his son he's a boy, but the mother insists this? He's six years old. What they're planning is chemical castration oh, yeah. by the age of eight. That's right. Yeah. That's what they're planning for. And the dad's word has in court just yeah. no no weight whatsoever. My heart goes out to this dad because you know you're sitting there look, looking at this from the outside, and I know like me if I if I was watching this or if this was going on in my house, I you would feel like you've got no You've got no control of the situation, it, and everyone this going, has lost is this their going mind. On at your house? No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. But it, no. it does. It seems We're surreal, but somehow society got to this point where the judge weighs in favor of. Do you think it's a factor that it's the dad who wants something different? Is that a factor in this case? What's interesting to me, and and maybe that is a factor. Who who knows? But why is the gender reassignment person all? I don't. I'm, I'm not going to say always because that's like, oh, he's wrong. It's not always. But it seems like in a high, a high, you know, count of these cases, the the gender reassignment person is a woman. And it's like, to to me, it's like they've all gotten together and like, yeah, we're going to do this. Uh, you know. Well, I. Here's what bothers me. It goes beyond. This case is like I had to pick something from way past the end zone. This is an extreme sure. story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking at other cases, and I'm not going to say that what I'm about to suggest is moral in any case. But it seems that in today's world that let's say a man uh, sleeps with a woman and she's pregnant. I'm not suggesting this is moral. This is a Christian show. We believe sex is for marriage. It's for the holy confines of marriage and so on. But let's say that that happens. The woman's not bound to tell him by law. And if she decides to terminate the pregnancy, have an abortion, she's not bound to tell him by law. Uh, if she has the baby, he is bound by law to support it forever. Um, and it seems, or, or if there's a divorce in the child custody case, it seems like 98, and I'm pulling that number out of my hat, but I know it's the vast majority of cases, custody automatically goes Most to the, the mother and the father mm-hmm. automatically pays. Have we come to the point where the father's opinion in family matters is just not valued? I think that's 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 the case. I think that's w- at least what the indication uh, that's where where we've gone. I'm not sure that that's where it was always, but uh, I, I definitely think that that's where we are now. Do you guys feel it? I mean, as men, do you feel it that? I mean, I, I I look at it. I'm nowhere near a divorce with my wife or anything like that. But in the back of my mind, I keep you thinking. Sure? Oh, uh, I don't know. Has she talked to you? No. No. You're, you're do, you guys, do you guys know something? I think you're, you're good. good. Do I have a home to go to tonight? What in the world? I've got a couch for you. <laughs> dog thanks, house. Ruben. You're a true friend. Uh, oh, I get the dog house at Alex's. i got a couch at Ru- No thanks to the dog house. I've got a real friend over here. Oh, man. It's a really nice dog house. I don't know. My gut tells me, though, that if it ever came down to it, the judge is going to rule against me for being a guy. Right. Yes, no? Well, yeah. I mean, I you know— it, 
from a technical standpoint, I don't think the court documents would ever say that. But again, the indication is is this is what we get. It's it's it like you said, it you know, it seems I, again, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it, it seems like that is more often than not the case. Well, here's Absolutely. the other thing to, to, to go along with what, with what you guys are saying in the vast majority of cases where the dad does want the the kid or something, you know, it, it's like, you know, does the dad actually step up and do what he's supposed to? I've, I've had lots right. of friends that were divorced when they, you know, their parents were divorced when they were young. The mom got custody and the dad was just like gone. And sure. so it's like, have sure. we done it to ourselves here? Sure. Well, there might be That's something valid. to that. I, I heard what Alex said. We were gone in the home when kids were little anyway mm-hmm. because That's we right. tended to be out right. in the breadwinners. But a lot of guys, I, I guess a lot of guys are dogs. I mean, I've, I've, I've got daughters, and so I'm not watching guys with a suspicious eye. That guy's a dog. That guy's a dog. That oh, yeah, guy's right. going to run if, you, if something bad happens. Maybe we have done some of it to ourselves. I I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, that's um, the feeling that I was that I was getting. I'm thinking about uh, the the Hollywood scene, and you, you have all these uh, all these father figures in there that that are treated uh, quite poorly, and everybody laughs at that. Right. Well, yeah, I've watched those shows too, and I was laughing as well. And, and well, so, some of them are funny. Some of them are funny, and yeah. so you know, I, and I think that because of of comedy and many many other things, we've just kind of let it let it go for a long 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 time. So between allowing uh, Hollywood to do this to us, between being um, in the workplace all the time, uh, between coming home so tired and saying, "Okay, my mom's going to take care of this uh, a lot," I think that we have slowly distanced ourselves and not really had a voice. And all of a sudden, we found ourselves in a mess, and that's the, that's the mess we're in now, mm-hmm. where some some judge says, "Oh, okay, well." We'll, we'll just let mom decide what sex this boy is going to be. Yeah, yeah I I know. Yeah. I this one is it's radical again. I chose to go to the end zone with with the story, but I um maybe maybe we are to blame. Maybe we are to blame to some regard because hey, if things go bad, we can run and and mothers really can't. Um, mm. The well, there, there are mothers who run. There's no mistaking sure. no, that. Absolutely. But but that's also on the fringes of of, yeah, of what right. you see. And if kids are little, if I were a judge, I know which way. Like, say the kids are under the age of eight or nine, I'd probably lean in the mother's favor just because during those years, it seems like the the female values are probably needed quite a bit there. Nurture, security, mommy, that kind of thing. There comes a point where young mm-hmm. men, those tend to break away from mommy and want something else. They want to be a man. And so mm-hmm. if, if the kids are little and I'm a judge, I'd probably lean in favor. You know who's going to take better care of them? Uh, I can be honest enough to say I'd probably lean in favor of the mom. The mom's probably going to take care of them. The dad's probably going to let them play with power tools. Right. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they yeah. should. Yeah. And they yeah. should. Well, What's wrong well, with that? We'll, we'll come to that after the break. No, <laughs> okay. There is a role for fathers, and I think danger is part of that role. That I think we'll come to I see the break coming. They're playing the music because you guys talked so much. All right. We're out of time. Especially you, Ruben. You were so chatty. Oh, I know. Class. Yeah. We'll come back in a moment and talk about uh, Jake Donovan and the custody battle that he's currently in. The story, the untold story. Uh, That's not true. It's not the untold (laughs) story of Discovery Mountain. Uh, But we're talking about our fathers still needed in this day and age, or have we moved past that as a society? What is God's role for fathers? What do men bring to the family unit? We're going to take a break. I hope you get a pen and paper and write down this information from the Voice of Prophecy because this is an offer that you do not want to miss out on. Write it all down, and we'll be back in just a moment. As you may know, the Voice of Prophecy is supported by people just like you. We provide Christ-centered programs and Bible studies free of charge so that no one is left out. If you've been blessed by these programs and would like to pay it forward, we invite you to visit vop.com give to make your tax-deductible donation. We're equipping the world for Christ to come, and your support will make a direct impact on so many lives. That's vop.com give. You toss and turn in bed and find yourself awake in the middle of the night. Your mind is in turmoil and you're overstressed with the stuff of everyday life. You need peace and calm in the middle of the storm. The answer you need is found in our free Discover Bible Guides. You can get yours by contacting us at VOP.com. Click on the tab that says Study or call me at 888-456-7933. That's 888-456-7933. Retirement planning can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. Call the friendly people at The Voice of Prophecy and learn about all your options based on your specific needs. Just give us a call at 1-800-348-5993. No, 
know, sometimes I think we should just leave the microphones live during the break because the best discussions happen during the break. And uh, Kyle, you were just during the break, you know, we were we've been talking about fathers. Do we still need fathers? What's the role of a male in a family and so on? And um, in one thing I hear a lot of these days is, well, there's male privilege in a marriage. The father is the privileged part of that marriage and he oppresses the women and men have it better than women and, and so on. But you you raised an interesting statistic in the break. Um, why don't you share that with us? Because it does tell a story that maybe would help us unpack what fatherhood is and should be. Yeah. So we we were talking about you know when the, when there's not a dad in the home, uh, what does that do to the children? And you know you you've got you've got both boys and girls in the home, and yet it, you can see the uh, the consequences of not having a father in the home are are much more uh, bad for boys. Than, than girls. And so the, uh, this individual was taking a look at the suicide rates between boys and girls and uh, from zero to nine, basically even suicide rates. Once, that, that breaks my heart that there's even a suicide rate exactly. for of a nine-year-old. Nine yeah. I mean, so, what, what kind of a, I mean, you're just ripping situation. my heart out as a pastor. What kind of child doesn't see life worth living under the age of nine? And well, I know it happens. My brother worked as victim services and had to cut down an eight-year-old boy one day. Yeah. And I, it, I mean, the, the situations that, that the kids are growing up in is, is yeah. Okay, is so horrible. basically even between boys and girls. Yeah, ten, from, from the age 10 to, 10 to 14, the the rate of suicide goes up two times for boys. 15 to 19, four times for boys. From 20 to 24, boys are six times more likely to commit suicide than girls. And and it's like, you know, you take a look at, like you said, from the last 50 years, in the family, the fathers have been leaving the family since since the 50s, the six, really since the 60s and the sexual well, when, revolution. When, when birth control became widely available and divorce became a much more... Um, after the sexual revolution, divorce suddenly became more possible and easy. And easy, yeah. And 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 so these these dads that aren't in the home, you know, this is the toll that it's having on on the boys. And and then so so the boys they don't have a dad at home, and then they go to school. Well, the the rate of male teachers in schools, and so they're they're really just a, around women all all the time. And so right. that's that's the kinds of. And to uh, be clear, little boys also need moms. But sure, yeah, I'm not absolutely. saying. But that. we've come to the point in society where we almost almost think of the dad as a disposable figure. Yeah. And I think Alex is right. Partly it's our own fault because we started disappearing. A lot of men are dogs, so we just disappeared. Um, but it is definitely having a toll. I'd never heard those numbers before. Six mm -hmm. times the suicide rate for young men. That's so sad. Now were those from homes that had no father? Yeah. This this is when this is when the the dad leaves. Uh, that's incredible. Wow. Well, what, what does a dad bring to children? You know, I, I was I was raised in a family where my it's a Hispanic family, uh, strong Hispanic values. Uh, my my mom stayed at home. My my dad expected certain things, and but w my dad my dad worked hard, but he would come home and and he would be tired, and he loved the television. He was addicted to TV, and so immediately as soon as he'd get home, he'd turn the TV on. He'd watch TV till one or two o'clock in the morning. Wow! And then he'd go back to work. And so most of my life, I grew up not really having my dad there. Um, <clears throat> my mom is the one that was always there. So when we talk about who played ball with you outside, well, that, that was my mom. Oh. Uh, who taught you to drive? That was my mom. Mm -hmm. Everything that that I that I learned, even though she didn't know how to play ball or anything, she was always out there trying trying to help me. The thing that uh, that strikes me now, as I look back at that, is this void, this mm -hmm. constant void that was that was there in in the the little son yearning to to to, to have his daddy. Mm -hmm. um, that that affected me some into into my adulthood uh, years ago. Before my dad passed away, he and I had a, had a chance and an opportunity to talk about those things, and even then, the 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 amount of pain that that I had just having the conversation of why why weren't wow. you there for me, um, and and we we were able to to, to work it out. But I, I tell you, it was it was amazingly uh, uplifting to hear him apologize, and and he broke down, he cried, he he he, he said he was so sorry. And that and that really healed a lot of the hurt. But I had carried all that hurt for many many years, and 
I can't blame my mother for what she did. She did the very best she sure. could. Mm-hmm. And, and any, any child would say, man, you, you had a great home. Look at how much time you spent with your mom. But even though I spent that much time with my mom, there was there was this huge void in there that my dad didn't fill, and, and that, that really hurt. Sure, and, and your mom really stepped up and filled that void. Or, she did. Or did, did the best she could. But and it's not a complete replacement. If it I'm wasn't. Hearing it right. Absolutely it wasn't. not. You still felt yeah. the void. It that's wasn't right. the same playing ball with your mom. Mm-mm. See, that's interesting because my dad would probably say the same thing about his dad. But when I grew up, my dad was very involved in, in my life. I think to counteract the balance that to, – to counteract that part where his dad wasn't there, he was like, I'm not going to have that for my son. That's right. You know? And so, and, and I see that in, in your life too, you know, you're, you're very involved with, with your kids. You and know? It, and it's yeah, what difference has that, that made? What, yeah, I'm, I wanted to ask you, what difference has that made to you now? You felt that void. So what is it that you see yourself bringing to your family? Well, here's, here's the reality and here's the difficulty of it. As much as we say we don't want to grow up to be like our, our parents. Oh, you will. Then you, you will you do. do you yeah, know? So you will. there's a part of me that's a, work, a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not addicted to television, but uh, there, I, I'm addicted to work. And so yeah. I, I work all the time. And, 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 and this is, you know, we're just being open here. Mm. But there's times that I'm at home and I'm thinking about work. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling guilty oh, because I'm done. with my family, but I should be opening the computer and doing and doing stuff. So, you know, you fight those demons, you fight that battle. I feel completely guilty if I'm just hanging with my kids and not doing work. I, I'll be honest about it. It's just like my whole being is screaming, but you have the following right. due by next Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, you know, I've had to make serious concert, concerted effort to, efforts to, to try to spend time with my kids. But but sometimes I, I don't spend the time that I should, and and, I, and I'll give you this example. I, I um, my undergraduate degree is in physical education, and so sports was my my entire life. Well, I had some bad experiences in that, and and so I decided to to not be so heavy into sports as 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 I had my kids. And and there's some things I haven't taught my kid how to how to play basketball and stuff like that. We do all kinds of other stuff. He rides horses now, and we do all kinds of stuff. But but things like basketball, baseball, football, the things I grew up playing, I really haven't taught him how to do that really really well. So a couple of years ago, um, he was we were in a, at a youth event, and they all wanted to play basketball, and so I I just happened to be there. And he's in the middle of the court and has no idea what to do. Oh, no. And so the kids are just running back and forth all around him. He wants to get involved, but he doesn't know how to. I cannot tell you how little I felt. I, mm. I just felt yeah. like, like a worm that I had completely uh, <laughs> and I'm laughing. my son out. And, and the I, rest I of us are laughing, <laughs> but it's a nervous laugh. It, it, oh, you know. So yeah, all, yeah, all, all of a sudden I'm looking fit. at this and I'm saying, you know, I've, I have become my dad. Yeah. I, I've done everything mm-hmm. that he yeah. did. I didn't yeah. think I was doing it, but sure enough, here I am. And what consequences that does uh, is, is my son's name is Chase. What kind of consequences is Chase going to suffer for the rest of his life? Yeah, I got to tell you, I've caught well, myself once before, or more than once, saying the phrase "Be quiet, I'm working." Yeah, and oh, thinking, yes. where have oh, I heard yeah. that before? Oh. That happens to me on Fridays all the time. <laughs> Be quiet, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Be quiet. What do dads bring to children that mothers don't? Oh man, my kids Ugh. love to wrestle with me. Danger. Yes, my yep. my yeah, yeah, yeah. my son. I'll come home and he'll go, Dad, are you ready to wrestle? <laughs> I'm like, Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I think it's I, I and that's very dependent on on the person, the, the 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 relationship, the family that you have. You know, for us, you know, um, I you know, and I've kind of come to terms with this. You know, in in, in the recent maybe twelve to twenty four months, is, and I felt guilty, and that it's you know, I'm not the comforter in chief in my house. But I am the silly one. I am the one who makes them laugh. And uh, yeah. not to say my wife doesn't, but that's that's my quality time with my kids. And and she is very much a comforter, which, you know, and so we are, really are you the you other. say you're not comforter in chief, Ruben, but are you the guys like quit crying? It's not that bad. Is that you? You know, um, <laughs> Suck in it different up, words, <laughs> <laughs> Tough, you know, up. yeah, you know, maybe I go overboard sometimes. But uh, <laughs> I saw you do this, Kyle, yesterday. Yeah, no, I, son, you were like, you're, yeah. you're all right, boy. You're fine. Right. Yeah. Well, well, no, really, here's, really. Here's the thing. That's it. He did not get hit in the face yeah. that hard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I saw what happened. I don't want Tough to, enough. I don't want the kids to think I'm insensitive, but I want, I want them to be prepared to get yeah, hurt. By, well, I saw life. a study. I saw a study this morning, knowing we'd be on the show. Yeah. It said mothers tend to think of the uh, world in relation to their child, like the yeah. world revolves yeah. around my child. I can see that. Fathers tend to think of their children as 
how the um, child is going to relate to the world. Yes, like that's you're trying yes, to that's absolutely you're true. trying to prepare absolutely them to true. go out. Yeah, you yeah. know what your child is going to face when they head out into the oh, marketplace. Yeah. And toughen up yeah. yes. is definitely a father trait. You are not a yeah. delicate exactly. snowflake. Right. <laughs> no. well, exactly. And I, and I think that that's what we bring to, we to the family. It. It, it's this this yeah. strength, this stability, this mm-hmm. sort of pillar mm-hmm. where where no matter what happens, they, they know they can go to their dad for protection. Yeah. And then when you're talking about raising your child, you want to instill that very same thing in them as well, especially if, it, if it's a boy. These are the thoughts that, that I think, and I've caught myself doing the same Dude, you've you've got to stand up. You got you've got to. In fact, I've said this. You, you need to be a man. You you need to grow up and be a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I know that society frowns on that statement. Now, how dare you do that to a boy? But doesn't a boy need that? I, I had a dad's like, let us take risks. And I know that with Jean, it's like, okay, the kids are learning to drive, and she's like, I don't like this. And uh, and when my daughter is speeding a little, I have to say, no, no, don't drive over the speed limit. But there's a little part of me that's saying. Yeehaw, this kid's going to make it in life. <laughs> right. Yeehaw. Like, that's my girl. I have daughters. I was right. like, step on it. Go for it. I know, like, the first ticket you ever get is part of your life's experience. Oh, and, ten days into it. Yeah, I, I know that Jean has gotten a couple of tickets in the last couple of months. So yes, she, she has. She oh, gets that speed. Oh, no, you know, here's what it happens. Came honest. Though. It's typically women are better at verbal things, skills. But somehow it irritates Jean to no end. I talk my way out of tickets, and she doesn't seem to be able to do it. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't flash her eyes and, you know, no, do, do that? No, no. That doesn't, that doesn't That's do what any good, man. My wife does that. I won't even tell you guys how I got on my last ticket. It's not, it's well, not pretty. I, no, I told, I told the officer, look, I just, uh, I just dropped my kid off at car. camp. I haven't been alone with my wife yeah. in years. It's, I'm in a hurry. And he laughed, said, that's pretty good. No warrants, you go home free. <laughs> All right, we said that on the air. But yeah, fathers, good. yeah, father, now I'm going to now I'm gonna have to use your couch for sure, Ruben. It's better than the Reel doghouse. Back in. Risk-taking, I think, is a big deal. And fathers encourage risk-taking because we want to see our kids. We know the reality. They're going to get beat up out there. And we don't want them to collapse the first time that yeah. happens. Am I wrong? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And no, if right. nothing is risked, exactly. nothing is gained. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, competition. Yes. That's the other thing I bring. Jean wants everybody to be happy. Although she can be, you know, if we sit down to play a family game, Jean can get competitive. But if we play, what's that game where you conquer the world? Risk. If we mm-hmm. play risk, Jean wants everybody to be happy. And and I'm teaching the kids, no, nobody wins until someone is crying. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> That's how you know that you've won. And that's not Monopoly has yeah. ended with no, the table getting thrown. <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah. Now, that is it's, not a Christian virtue. I've well, exaggerated for effect. <laughs> but there's something to it, isn't there? Fathers teach competitiveness. Or am I wrong? Oh, no, I no, want to say, I, 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 don't, I don't know if, if you guys are like this, but I want to see my, my kids dominate your kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, we're going to have well, to take a break yeah. here in a minute. And then yeah. after that, we're going to go to the Bible because it seems like it's way past time to go to the Bible Amen. and find some virtues so that Kyle doesn't teach his children to be Hitler. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it seems. Okay, we will have to balance it. We will go to the Bible next. What does the Bible say about fatherhood? And the question we're asking today is, does the world still need fathers. We've moved since the 1960s to a point where some people say, no, what do we need that for? But I think we're paying a toll in this world. We have boys growing up without role models and people who, well, we'll come back to that in a moment. This is the music for the break means I'm supposed to be quiet now. So we'll be right back after this announcement. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by the Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, (laughs) Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain, where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers, Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com. I see Jim. 
Joel pointing his finger at me. That means that the uh, the microphones must be on. Is that true, Joel? We're back on the air. So now I have to guard what I say. Had quite a discussion in the break about the construct of the home and our fathers needed in the home. What is their role in the home? Let me ask this, guys. Um, sometimes I used to feel pretty bad, like I'm the bad guy, when my wife would make an appeal to me to do something about disciplining the children. And I ended up feeling like the... Um, like the policeman, go, don't make me go get your father. And it seemed like, okay, mom could hand out a little spanking or something, but if we wait till dad gets home, all hell's going to break loose. I mean, that is the worst thing. Uh, Gene didn't do that very often, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like, uh, why do I have to be the bad guy? Why is the father the disciplinarian? Is that true in your homes? I, I don't feel like it's, you're a bad, it's, it's not like good cop, bad cop, right. you know. I, yeah, I, you would right. know about that, but yeah, Alex point, was a cop. Yeah, pointing to Alex, he was a cop. <laughs> Were you a good cop or a bad cop, Alex? Uh, I was a good cop. I don't Were buy you? it. <laughs> you, put, you made me sleep in the doghouse. That seems like a bad. But cop you haven't tactic. seen this doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> but in 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 our home, you know, I I think that it's it's the man's role to be the disciplinarian. And and, and here's here's the thing, when when my wife disciplines the kids, they get madder. And they go off, just off the rails and just get completely crazy. If I discipline them, two minutes later, they're hugging me. You know, it's it's a complete dichotomy on, on what's going on after we discipline the kids. And we discipline them the same way. So There's some good counseling for, for you uh, guys. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, there, I'm there with in, you. In what, in what no, ways? No, well, I'm there with you. My, my family's the same. I would rather discipline my kids than have my wife discipline my kids. Uh, she's she snaps a little bit faster than I am. Uh, sometimes she's she's a little bit more unreasonable than I am, and and so she's she's just. Are, like, oh no! Did she, Stacey she, listen she, to oh this? Oh no! You, you, I, you're I've welcome a, to use I've my cou- doghouse. I've got a couch for you too, Alex. I have two. No, of I mean, them. I mean, I mean it's, it's true. Personalities are different, and yeah. and so I'm I'm a lot more tolerant than than she is. So I would rather do the the disciplining. Now I'm not at home as much, so she ends up ends up doing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would much rather talk to the kids, and I, I so agree with you. So it's special when Dad disciplines you in your house. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> so you enjoy spanking the children? Is that what you just said? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't quite saying that. <laughs> Let's not go that far. <laughs> uh, I'm, it's the opposite in my home. I'm easily the hotter temper. I'm easily going to. I always meet out. I can out, see that. Oh yeah, I I meet out the harsher punishment every time. With Gene, it might be all right. You know what? Uh, you're not watching TV with your friends tonight, or you can't go to your friend's house tonight. It's me like no driving, five weeks. <laughs> it's like, and then if they talk yet. back a little bit, eight weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I'm only exaggerating a little. Just I did meet that out once. You can't drive the car for three weeks, and they but dad, and that just but dad was enough. Like okay, four. Well, you got anything else to say? And then it becomes a punishment for you, and you're like, now I have to drive my daughters around. Right? Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. But yeah. I'm, I'm the hotter temper. I'm, and uh, you try to. As a man, I think, okay, go cool off before you meet out discipline because it's inappropriate yeah, when you're hot true. and oh sure true. absolutely yeah absolutely. but in our house i don't know I, I guess i'm the bad guy it's like okay if, if dad deals with it it's far more serious i don't know yeah. ruben in your house you know and i was saying in the break it's complicated in my house it depends <laughs> it depends on the situation frankly you know uh, you kyle you gave the example and i'm just being open here you know uh, about you know how the children react to, to, sure. to both of you you know it it can be the opposite when my kids will blow up on me especially my dear older one yeah um <laughs> <laughs> love you kiddo uh, <laughs> yeah they'll you know, listen so, to this in 10 years you know yeah. it, it, it all depends on the situation to 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 be fair um you know meanwhile you know and sometimes it boils my skin it's like meanwhile you know and that you know, gets my temper up i'm like <laughs> you know and meanwhile my, my wife is like do it now. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, your, your wife is you telling you to, to no, 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 get no, this no. over with her. Oh, oh. No, she's talking to the so kids. Talking, oh, talking to the kids. Same oh, thing okay. that I said. But on the other hand, you know, I have situations where, where I suddenly it works pictured the you with a belt <laughs> and your wife saying, do it <laughs> too. Now, okay. okay, we need an intervention in this house. <laughs> That's their No good, their children good have been harmed in the making of this episode, <laughs> I promise. Do it now. I don't do want it now. To. There's good counseling you know, for that too, man. <laughs> there is. There is. We're still figuring that one out, but but you know, at, at the same time, um, there is there is something to be said. 
<laughs> We're not going to make it through, are we? Um, uh, we'll make it. There, there is something to be said about about you know having a cohesive approach, which which we do, and and not losing your temper. That's that's the biggest one. My kids, my kids will detect that, like that. And just when I think I have, um, it's not like I lose my temper and blow up and throw things around. But if I if they detect the slightest frustration in me, that could mean the difference between them doing what I ask them to do or not doing it. Um, and so that that moment for me to go cool off mm-hmm. and approach them and, and and they know they said I need time you know and right. I walk away and and when I come back they know that I mean it you know yeah. it's uh, well, I can, I can so. tell you at my house because I'm I'm gone during the day a lot more that seems to be where my wife fights the biggest battles with the kids yeah. and so she does end up disciplining a lot. And then by the time I get home, then it's just a couple of hours before they go to bed, and so we're playing together, we're having a great dinner together. And so her frustration yeah. is is more of the fact that every time you come in, mm. you play with the kids, and you <laughs> yeah. get the fun angel, yeah, yeah. and I look like the devil. Uh, yeah. And, and so, you know. Yeah. Well, see, I, this, my, my dad, when, when I was growing up, um, worked only about seven, eight minutes from work. And I remember on many occasions him coming home to work to discipline me. And so I've told my wife the same thing. I only live like about, he left work. He left work, came home, disciplined me. Oh, you I would do, live in fear of that. Yes, Ooh. and I did. Yeah. And so we, oh. Kyle. So what, that's when what we, did you do? No, no, I'm not getting into that. But <laughs> just that tone I mean, probably raised a memory work. or two. What yeah. did you do? Yeah. What did you do? But yeah. but so I told my wife, you know, when we when we're looking for a place to live here, it's you know I either want to live close enough that this is an option. And, and literally, this was one of the planned. reasons. You actually, I actually planned that you planned. could come home and. Yeah, wow. absolutely. Because I, I want my kids to know that, number one, mom mom means business. But if you don't do what mom says, yeah. dad is five minutes away from being here. Mm. Wow. That's not very long. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's I don't know if I'm impressed or terrified. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I'm, I'm kind of terrified over here. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is the, I. When we raise the kids, it's right now we are training kids. Yes. Right. What are yes. you training your kids that's for? Right. I'm trying to train my kids to walk straight into heaven. Yeah, that's right. And that's and exactly. the, 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 the stuff that we're allowing our kids to get into or, or allowing to come into the home speaks directly to what we're training our kids for. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, uh, now that I'm 20, 30, you know, years later from, from my dad. Oh, I thought for a minute you were going to try and convince us that you were 20. No, I'm, I'm not. But I'm saying, like, you know, I look back at that and I go, I appreciate my dad, you know, being consistent in that. Yeah, and consistent is a tough yeah. one. I uh, I don't know. Do you find, you, do you guys, uh, when it comes to how strict am I as a dad and how lenient am I, I have, it took a little while to get there. I'm very strict in the beginning. That's a Dutch-German thing that you were pointing mm-hmm. out, Alex, but... There's part of me that, like, mm-hmm. if you say no to everything all the time, even if you don't like what the child's about to do, mm-hmm. um, then are they going to associate my attitude with God? Mm. Yes, and yes. God allows some freedom of choice. So as they got older, they'd say, Dad, can we watch this TV show? And I'm thinking, all right, I don't like it. It's not the worst TV show in the whole world. But if I say no to everything all the time, so my approach would be, hey, Sweet. all right, let's watch it together. You're going to take notes, and you're going to tell me whether or not the people who wrote that show were Christians and how you could tell. Yeah, hmm. they were older. I wouldn't do that with a five-year-old because everything you watch is. Pl- I'm talking 14, 15, 16. Sure. And I found myself giving more latitude as time went on instead of always no. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I, Alex. I saw you open your Bible. That's an important point. point in the show. Yeah, I uh, as as Kyle was talking, I thought about uh, the story of of Samuel, um, in first first Samuel chapter three. And so I just wanted to read a verse here. I got. I'm getting old, so now I got to put put my, your glasses put my glasses on so I can see my own Bible. It's a it's pitiful, man. But you know, you get you have this story in in Samuel. You have this priest that that has these sons that uh, the Bible says are wicked, and and he's supposed to be raising them in the right way. And and of course, little Samuel comes to comes to live with them. So look in here at chapter chapter three, right? And in, in in verse twelve and thirteen, Eli. Right. Eli mm-hmm. In that day, I will perform against Eli. This is God speaking to Samuel. In that day, I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And thirteen is really what captured me here. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And well, sometimes men are um, 
I mean, we're told in this day and age, men don't belong in the home. They're too severe. They're too strict. They're too. But God holds him accountable for not disciplining his That's children. Right. That's, That's right. right. He blames the father in this case for ch- children that have run wild. And Hophni and um, Phineas. Phineas have run wild. They're, Absolutely. Yeah. They're Absolutely. irreligious. Yeah. That's right. They're corrupt. They took yeah. bribes, it says. They're leading the people yeah. astray. I mean, there's there's great consequences. This this mm-hmm. is why, yeah. why I thought about this. Mm-hmm. You, you talked about being close to your kids because you wanted to make sure that 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 they're raised up in such a way that they follow God. I, and I, I, read, that, I respect that. I read mm-hmm. somewhere that a child's character is basically set by the time they are six. Yeah. Yes. I've read the same yeah. thing. And, and that scares me to no end. And so, you know, when, my wife and I, we're just like, okay, we, we have you know, till they're six and, and, and beyond, but, you know, till they're six, we really have to stay on top of this. And then yeah. after that, hopefully... After that, you just quit? Well, no. <laughs> just, after they that, can raise themselves from seven. After that, that right. hopefully it's stuck. Further. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, but, you know, if, no, well, but if it, you can, you know, the first two years were, were very difficult and, you know, you're sitting there trying to, you know, balance all this stuff. So, well, yeah. I, I've had some people say, well, you disciplined your kids when they were two and three. You should wait till they're seven, eight yeah. years old. They yeah. don't understand. Ooh, yeah. It's the yeah. opposite. It's right. completely right. the opposite. When we started at two and three with discipline and like, no, no, and they did it anyway. Okay, a little swat on the butt. And that was yeah. in the days when you couldn't go to prison for that. A little mm-hmm. swat on the butt. I never had to do it again. Past the age of three, we never, ever had to do that again. Yeah. It, the character is set young. Yeah. And, and and I think society understands that S- parents don't seem to, but society does. Look 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 what the the school systems are doing. You know, you're training a, a new generation. You're doing it right. from from young. Politics does it trains a, sure. a, a, a new generation. Yeah. Uh, I I think those formative formative years are, are so essential, and and many times we just miss that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you were going to say something, really? No, I mean, I think you covered it. You know, I it just uh, all of this, you know, speaks of, you know, train up a child in the way he should go. And, you know, he will mm-hmm. not depart for it. And I, I think, you know, I, I don't think the Bible mentions an age, but, you know, this this research about, you know, child's character being kind of, quote unquote, solidified for, for you know, lack of a better term by the age six. I think I think there's wisdom and the Bible had that wisdom before we had the science to it. I think sure. um, it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Having a now 10 year old almost, I can tell you, you know, it definitely bears to be the truth from mm-hmm. my perspective. So, yeah, one of my problems yeah. is like stopping to stop being the dad. I've got one who's 19. Oh, and yeah. It's like, okay, I'm an advisor yeah. and not your daddy at this point. And uh, I did that. Well, we can talk about that after the break. I see we've got seconds to go to the break. Okay. And I do want to have a Bible study on, because beyond the story of Samuel, which I'm glad you brought that up, Alex, that, that shows God holds us accountable if we refuse to discipline our children okay. as fathers. I think there's more. There's more to a biblical role. And I think once we take a look at that, it becomes quite obvious that God's plan is not one parent, although some listening don't feel badly if you're in a single parent situation. That's, right. That's not what yeah. the point we're trying to make. We're talking the idea deal. And sometimes marriages fall apart and sometimes you have to get the dad out of the house because he Mm -hmm. is an abuser. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about, but we are going to look at the ideal. What is an ideal father? What is God's idea for a man in the house as he relates to the children, as he relates to the wife? Our topic today is, does the world still need fathers? You're listening to Disclosure. My name is Sean Boonstra. You're about to hear an amazing offer from the Voice of Prophecy. Grab a pen and paper. You want to write down all the details because this kind of offer only comes along once in a while. Retirement planning can be a stressful process, but it doesn't have to be. The friendly people at The Voice of Prophecy can walk you through the entire process and explain all of your options based on your specific needs. Whether you'd like to set up a trust for income or make a gift that will benefit your loved ones and change lives through The Voice of Prophecy, we're here to help. To learn more, call 1-800-348-5993. All around us, the world is changing. Homes are being lost. Lives are being threatened. And some people are asking the question, does God even care about me? The Bible answers that question, and what it says is very encouraging. Find out what God says regarding this topic and some of life's greatest issues in our free Discover Bible Guides. You can get yours by going to VOP.com, click on Study, or call us at 888-456-7933. 888-456-7933.
Again, I wish the microphones were on during the break because Kyle just revealed why he lives so close to the office. What was it again? You, Your mom told you not to eat, and you did, right? Children, obey your parents. <laughs> yeah. Your mom said, don't eat. We're having dinner. You did it anyway, and your dad came home. Yeah. 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 Children, obey your parents. Do you need a quiet moment? <laughs> yeah. How did that go? Well, yeah. And it, you know, and, and looking back now it makes for a funny story, but you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like that was the consistency that I needed at that moment. Absolutely. You yeah. know, because other otherwise, no no one wants a kid that's you know not obeying them in the house. Right. Get yeah. Get a job, kid. During the break, Alex right? and I were talking about times. I I remember mouthing off my mother one time, and my father put a decisive and quick end to that. I'll never forget that. I'll put it this way. I was well aware of the fact that at 14, I was not ready to take him on. Yeah. And we needed that. We, oh, we yeah. absolutely needed that. Uh, oh, yeah. I know in today's day and age, everybody says, you can't do that. It did me a world of good. Sure. Changed my life. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I knew not to talk to my mom ever like that. No? <laughs> no, there's truth to that. And there's a difference between abuse and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, no, the- I tried taking on my dad a few times. I remember one time he actually picked me up and threw me because he saw me picking on my brother and... And he grabbed me by the collar to let me know exactly what being picked on felt like and yeah. tossed me. He tossed me <laughs> like a beanbag. And uh, nowadays, you go to prison for that, I suppose. I wonder if I could still prosecute my father. I wonder. <laughs> Get over it. Sue him for that. No, but I don't know if there's enough of that. And we're not talking abuse and, and stuff. I know no. our, our subject in the last segment was discipline. There's a difference between abuse. But there is something about... There was something about not knowing what my dad was capable of. That's right. <laughs> well, and here's, here's the other thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The mystery. Ch- children yeah. want to know where the boundaries are. Yep. Yeah. And if yep. you're not there to show them where the boundaries are, they're going to go wild. Yeah. And and then and then you're going to get to the point when they're 8, 9, 10 and go, man, I wish I would have shown them where the boundaries were when they were 2 or 3. Right. Yeah. That's too late. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, by the time I'm 15, I'm bigger than my mom, and she's sure. just not a threat. And yeah. yeah. And you feel – and when you're 15 and you're a young man with testosterone raging and you're trying to prove you're a man, you prove you're a man in all the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so you're not scared of your mom, but – there's something about dad. There is something about dad in the house. Boy, mm-hmm. it, what else is he capable of? And there's there's a little bit of the alpha dog thing there. I think there needs to be an alpha sure. dog in a pack. I, I'm, I'm setting my stakes at, at the house right now. My son is 14. He's taller than I am. Uh-oh. And I'm just telling him, dude. You don't want to try it. And he's wearing, <laughs> I'll, I'll still take you. He's wearing spurs too. He is wearing I, I, spurs. I was yeah. like, man, I'm a, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, you might be tall at fourteen. I'm not, I'm not getting that. But you're not quite done developing. No, no, no. no. And I he's, totally, he's I around. totally lost any challenge <laughs> yeah. with my dad at that age, man. I just lost because, yeah. All right, let's let's go to the Bible. What is God? I think it's pretty clear. This is a faith based program. God wants fathers in the home. We've we've established that they're there for a reason. We teach. Uh, I think men tend to teach values like rules and order and competition and independence and risk-taking. We've established those rules. Uh, We could have had time today for, like, what happens to a young man who doesn't have a father in the house. He doesn't know what a man is supposed to be when he gets out in the world. And and a young woman, when she goes out dating, doesn't necessarily know what a husband should look like if there wasn't a good, positive role model And that's how you get these abusive things, because the the Bible's very clear. You're not supposed to be abusive. Yeah, and, right. But if it's modeled to you that way in your house, and you, you know, it's by example, exactly. Yeah. Well, what does God you know, expect? What does God expect? Yeah. I think one of the things I'll, I'll just throw this out on the table. Mm-hmm. I think that God expects that we would demonstrate to our children uh, what He is like. You know, we're He. he yes. He uses the analogy of Father to describe Himself to all of his children. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the roles we should be playing is what would a heavenly father be like? Because I've Mm -hmm. seen what happens when a father isn't that, and there's this tendency of children in the end to hate God because they think he's like that. Yep, that's right. I think we're to model God in the house. Yep. Gentlemen? Yeah, you know, as as you're talking, I I think of Genesis 3. Um, And it's probably a culmination of everything we've been talking about, but I think of, of, of Genesis 3. In Genesis 3, you have... You have a father and and children type of relationship. You have the God that has created uh, Adam. He's created Eve, and 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 then as they as they end up turning away from him, he has to discipline them. Yes, and it, and it's quite clear there 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 are consequences for their action, and he does what he needs to do. But there's some there's some parts in there that that really are are touching. The fact that that although he knows 
what they have done, he's still seeking them. He's still walking in the cool of the day, trying to trying to reason with them. And and then there's the there's there's that intonation there of of what what God is going to do to save them. The mm-hmm. fact that uh, that you get sort of the first fruits of understanding the plan of salvation. And, and as I as I think about that, I see you know this this is God. This is the the love of God. This is this is where the Bible combines justice and mercy together. And and that's that's what we su- we're supposed to as fathers demonstrate to to our our children as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at Proverbs 20 and verse seven. I looked this one up before the show. It says this, the righteous man walks in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. Mm -hmm. That means modeling integrity does something to improve our children's lot in life. Mm -hmm. And when the father is missing and he doesn't demonstrate, you know, manly virtues or fatherly virtues or demonstrate integrity, one thing that God is asking from us is to demonstrate integrity. Now, I'm not always good I mean, I try to be in integral. I try to demonstrate integrity. I blow it once in a while. But in the whole, that's what God's asking from me. Show your children what a real man looks like. Show your children what integrity looks like, and their life will go better as a result. And I think that this is almost a prophecy, this verse, of what happened since the 1960s. There's not a lot of integrity in the homes, and children have been cut loose from their moorings. And I think we're watching that. We're watching a whole generation that denies whether there's right or wrong, period. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Your, your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth. It's it's craziness. The the word blessing in here is what really stands out to me. Integrity did too, but blessing. Are 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 we a blessing in our homes? Are we a blessing to our to our children? If we were to ask our children, you know, are you, are you blessed by dad? Yeah, it depends on what day you want to go in and ask my kids. <laughs> That's right. right. Uh, they but, just ground ground me, and I can't drive right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for three four weeks. Yeah, yeah. you know, one, one of the, eighteen <laughs> years, man. Eighteen years. <laughs> you didn't bless me at all. No. Alex, you know, when you brought up Genesis 3, right right then when Adam and Eve sinned, Christ already goes in and and pays the the price. So as as a you know, as a loving father, he he has already, you know, given his life for them right there from the foundation of the world. And, you know, they're um they don't know it yet, but but he's already, you know, gone through the the steps that, that he needs to take. His, his 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 willingness to do this exactly yeah. is is what's incredible. Well, Ephesians five, when it talks about what the role is of a man in the house, one of the things that it identifies is we are to love our wife as Christ loves the church, which means up to and including, you're the first to go. That's right. Mm-hmm. You will die yes. first in this home for the good of your entire family. Mm-hmm. You will put your life on the line. So protector, I think, is in, in that role as well. Yeah. And that's that, that stems plan of salvation. God puts himself in the line. I'm going to save you. I will lay down my life mm-hmm. for you. And he does. But God asks the same mm-hmm. thing of the Father. Um, and I know that full well. Like, you're the first to go. If someone breaks into this house at 2 in the morning, you stand in front of your family. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm the one getting right. up. Check, checking the door, and you know, because yeah. there was some kind of crazy. Noise. No, I hide under yeah. the bed. Gene, go see what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I, don't. <laughs> I hide under Ruben's couch and do that. <laughs> hey, Ruben, go see Spe- what that is. You know, I'm in my doghouse. <laughs> yeah, I, dog I got a couch for you, man. I, I, I got a second couch. So, Thank, yeah, thanks, I'm Ruben, happy you're to so share. kind, I mean, man. Just uh, you know, but speaking of couches, you know, it's funny story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was sleeping on the couch once. Uh, <laughs> nice. No, you know, I, I, you know, I fell asleep on the on the couch. I you know, sitting there scrolling through my phone. And before you know it, you know, it's like, you know, you don't want to get up. And, and, and so the next day, um, you know, my kid, I don't know, but he's not like my, my youngest one notices these things. And we're talking, you know, she's, I don't know we're at church or we're some church friends or something like that. And somehow the topic of the fact that I fell asleep on the couch that night, um, came up and, uh, and she, her reason, her reason in her head, why I went to sleep on the couch was because, I was going to protect her from bad guys. That's what she came out oh, with. Wow. That's oh, wow. We had no discussion. There was no yeah. absolute, you know, and it's, and it's you were funny. thinking bad guys. You didn't bad tell guys. <laughs> where? Where? <laughs> where? <laughs> where? <laughs> you didn't but, tell you know, it's, but, but that's absolutely true. I think it's it's natural. This is this is what my kids see. Well, and that's what they expect. Is that, and it's what they expect. It's yeah. They expect that and I'm going to comforting. protect them. And so sleep comforting. on the couch more. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> no, but, but, but hey, let me, let me just add to that because yeah. uh, this picture came to my mind. When we all have children, so we've gone through this, as, yeah. as you have your hand and your little child puts, puts their hand in yours, yeah. and you realize the size difference there. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, so many times that, that, that they've done that, and I've thought to myself, you know, who, who am I? 
What what have I been called to do? Look look at the size difference. Right. Look at the, the the strength difference, and and there is there is that yeah. level of protection that, that mm-hmm. we have as fathers, mm-hmm. and that, and that God has over us. Has has the thought ever popped into your mind when they do that? It's like, oh my word, they trust me, mm. and I know right. who I am, and they don't. <laughs> if <Yeah>. they knew, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just being honest. It's like, oh, I'm a dad now, and God expects me to put my life on the line for this little one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. You know, let's go. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. I was just, I was just going to say. You know, one of the things that that strikes me is, you know, you know, I, I talk about how I discipline the children, but um, also, you know, um, there's a verse. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look it up here as we speak here in um, Psalms. It's Psalms 103. 13, you know, yeah. as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion, um, you know, to those who fear him. That that goes hand in, that goes hand in hand with, with the discipline portion. And and when I can turn around, mm-hmm. I can discipline my child, but at the same time, I'm sitting there loving on them. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, yeah. it's just, it's special. Let me, let me turn this on, on its head for a minute. I know we're running out of time, but let me turn this on, on its head and back to Genesis 3, because in Genesis 3, sometimes I think we get the idea that Adam and Eve... Uh, failed and then God is dispatched to to bring justice, mm-hmm. and and that's I, I think it's totally different. I think just like us, something happens to our children, something causes them to, to right. fall, and oh, yeah. and this mm-hmm. righteous anger comes down. And so we maybe should picture this as a little different. God has now come down to protect His children. Amazing, mm-hmm. I think oh. that's absolutely right. I always picture God when He's crying out, "Adam, where are you?" I I picture it with tears in His eyes. What right. if, What mm-hmm. have you done? Yeah. What is this going to cost us? It's kind of like when your kids do something that's self-harmful. It's like, what have you done? Your, your fear is, I'm going to lose this child. They're that's not right, ready for right. life. And and I tell you one of the most rewarding things that has ever happened for me, and it's like I've got one daughter who, who's left home already mm-hmm. and another one who's about to go. It's when I get these little notes. I got a birthday card a little while ago, and in there was, Dad, thanks for teaching me mm-hmm. X. And it doesn't matter what X was. I thought, oh, my goodness. All that time, I thought none of this was landing. That's right. Mm -hmm. They weren't hearing anything. But when they got out in the world and faced the real world and suddenly realized why I had told them that, and I got that, Dad, thanks, because I'm ready for life now. Thank you for teaching me X. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any greater reward reward than that. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any greater reward than that. Being a dad is rewarding. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I had a little bit uh, of that with my my daughter this morning. Uh, she wanted to know my little one, six years old. She wants to know what I want for 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 Christmas. Yeah, and I have you know, I've truly gotten to the point now that I, I just I just want to be with them. Yeah, and, and, and she couldn't understand that. No, 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 Daddy, I I really want to I really want to know what you want for Christmas. And it's like, Aww. you know, honey, I, <laughs> I I just want to spend time with with you. I want to spend time with you. Yeah. I, I want you to 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 grow and. And and love and oh man, uh, kids are kids are amazing. And my youngest got me a model for my birthday last year, like the old glue together. Really, oh, wow. she got me a model, and I was touched because it meant a whole, oh, I think three hours of sitting together mm, and putting math. it together. I loved it. I loved it. I said that's the greatest gift I've ever gotten. But Dad, it was so inexpensive. You don't understand. What I wanted right. was you with me, and we that's did right. that together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what they will it's remember, easy. and what we will remember for eternity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I see 45 seconds on the clock until they play the music and sign us off. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I think the consensus is, do uh, do we still need fathers Absolutely. in this world? Mm-hmm. I think society's paying the price for excluding fathers from the equation. Right. Men may be to blame for some of that, let's be honest about yeah. it. But I think society as a whole is paying a huge price. Dads, don't give up. You need to be in that home. You need to be with those kids, and they need you. You can ignore what society is telling you. You can ignore what the sexual revolution is telling you. God designed you to be in that home, and you can be a man, too. You don't have to be a feminine uh, father, as the world is telling you. You can be a dad and go out there and do dad things with your kids and raise them the way God intended. Until next time, this is Sean Boonstra, and you've been listening to Disclosure. Disclosure.